Welcome to another round with Radar, brought to you by Ping. Play your best. Look up there, the flagpole, the Irish flag, yeah, that's a giveaway. No, I'm not in Sydney. My flag's up there as well, very kind of them. I'm in Waterford, actually West Waterford Golf Club, home of a prominent professional golfer. He was in golfing obscurity for so long. 400, 500 in the world, who cares? He's now a top 50 player. PGA Championship, the US Open, the Masters. This guy can seriously play. Waterford, West Waterford. What a golf course it is. So let's, before we meet my guests, let's go and check out, let's go and meet the first ever captain of this fine golf club, West Waterford. And here he is, the first ever captain of West Waterford Golf Club, Pat Murphy. You've been here a long time, Pat. Yeah, tell, us, tell us all about what you know and what you remember about uh, your young star, Seamus Powell. When we haven't long enough. Okay. We haven't long enough to talk all about I know Seamus Power. I met Seamus for the first time when um, <clears throat> Celia Welsh, the late Celia Welsh, uh, took him onto the practice ground. And I was the go-to person at the time because there was nobody else in, in the club at that time that kind of knew much about golf and that. And Seamus arrives in, I was about four foot nothing. And um, to be honest, he had no more interest in golf. He was more into Gaelic football, Gary Hurley, racquetball and so on. He was there, I thought, against his will. And then I said to Seamus, sure, maybe we'd hit a shot or two. So he took a seven iron out of Celia's bag. And he stood up to this thing with a wrong grip, by the way, at the time, reverse grip, and whacked this thing down. And all I had was click. And I looked around and I said, oh. I said, you could play golf. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, maybe. I get quite emotional when I'm talking about Seamus Power because it's such a good new story. Yeah. It's a fairy tale story, and I must say, I do get emotional. He just told me going out the door now that he's home for a few weeks. He was going to call to my house and have tea with us like he always did. I, I don't believe this is happening, to be honest. Well, it's fantastic, Pat. It's Thank fantastic. you ever so much. You're very welcome, Wayne. Delighted to meet you. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not one of the Murphys from Murphy Village. I've been, but I'm one of the other crowd. Let's go and join the prodigal son, Seamus Power on the 10th tee. Is he ready for me? Seamus Power. He's on everyone's TV screens at the moment. From West Waterford, now living in Las Vegas. That's quite a, quite a move. Good to be home, mate. It is great to be home. Yeah, yeah. A little different weather here, but yeah, it's great to be home. Yeah, over the, we've got some weather coming in over, <laughs> over the hills, but it's absolutely magnificent. So this is where you grew up. Yep. And well, not an old golf club, only 30 years old. Yeah. Old, so you've been here yeah, sure. since I was, yeah, since about that high. Uh, so you, were you the club champion? No, uh, no, I never was, no, no, I never won the old match play. No, won different things here and there, some gross prizes here and there, but no, no, no club champion. I've heard some great stuff, but let's go, we're going to have a little match, we're going right. to have a learn all about you, Seamus, you've come from, mate, amazing, you've come so fast to such prominence. <laughs> yeah, it's been a good... 15 months, 12 months, or whatever it's been now. Dizzy? Yeah. Like, are you like, whoa, this is... Uh... No, but it's still nice. Like, I mean, I, you, I, was, I felt it might be coming, but obviously it's still nice to see it on paper and stuff. So it's been some good stuff. Absolutely. Will I lead the way? Go. Yes, please do. I'll try not to hit it too far past you. <laughs> no, no guarantee. Down out Sorry. of the right. Seamus, yeah? Yeah, towards the flag is pretty, pretty spot on there. Pretty straight, slight like leg right. Oh, <laughs> don't put that tea away, Seamus. <laughs> do you want that? A little Irish flag on the turf here? You have to, <laughs> yeah, you have to. Oh, I've been a busy man so far over this summer, so pardon a, a few dodgy shots. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Corey Pavin, eat your heart out. <laughs> All over the world now you're playing. And what's it like to come back to a club that you grew up on where you're telling me 
off camera that the trees were so small and now so, so much bigger. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. You know, I mean, geez, time flies so quickly, but it's one, I mean, I don't have much to compare it to, but it's been an amazing club to be a member at, you know, like this support over the years. And obviously now, like the support is everywhere, but like even I was playing mini tours and all that sort of stuff, the support coming from the club was amazing. So it, it's great to be home. It's almost like a big family here, I said. Like, yeah. The, the owners and stuff I've known for years, and it's just, it's great. It's great to be back home and see some of the familiar faces here. Yeah, when you walked in there and you stood on the first tee, you're all the members around you, you remember all their names. I mean, it does, it does have that family atmosphere, that family vibe. When you come home, do you go, wow, this is, this is home, this is just... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, for me, like home, I mean, I've, I know I've been in the States for a while, but home is always going to be home, and this is, this is going to be it for me. It's, it's a fantastic place, nothing but good memories, and so many good people here, it's great. What's the best score you've shot around here? I was, I was 12 under through, I, I shot 60 off the white tees in, but it was 16 whole competition, I was 12 under through 16. Oh dear. I only part of that too, didn't have it in me. That's not good for me, is it? <laughs> hey? That's not but good for me. I don't know what the course record is now, because they've, they've moved some tees and did something. I don't think it's an issue for me. <laughs> I don't think it's an issue for me. <laughs> Well, I've got a five iron here. Seamus, that's about right for me. Long first hole for me, anyway. I mean, the wind out of the right, a lot of wind. A lot of wind out of the right. See, back in the day, see, when the wind's out of the right-hand side of a shot like this, would you hold it up or would you just turn it on? I have a big, I have a big, I, I'll hold it. Just, yeah. Hmm. Like I, 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 just weave your magic. Yeah, try anyway. It's just when it gets this strong to me, if it starts turning over, just you don't know where it's going to stop. So at least just try to keep it. At least this way I feel I can start it in the green and hopefully I'll be finished okay. in the green. Okay. I'm going to hold it. <laughs> I'm holding. I'm going to hold this up. Oh, yeah. Well, it's come out a bit bottom groovy, but it's holding. And it's scooting up there. Lovely. Oh, front edge. Greener regulation, start today. Yeah. It's all right. I'll take that first up. It was, <laughs> it was as ugly as Seamus. <laughs> you know it, but it was straight and she was holding. It is, she worked. <laughs> Not what I envisioned. So Seamus, how did you get involved with the Ping family? I was very lucky, so I, I, when I went to college in the US, went to East Tennessee State, and they were one of the, I'm not sure exactly how many like official Ping schools. And it was, it was incredible. So my, I, I don't think when I started in college, I was using any ping clubs. And by two months into my second year, I switched to all ping and it's been ping ever since. It's, yeah, it's been amazing. I've said at the time, their, their service was incredible. Like we'd Scott Sullivan come in and he just, you know, he, sh he showed me things at clubs I didn't know. And like, it was just incredible. You know, like you'd get a new set, you'd get some new edges or something and he'd, he'd, he'd make sure they're there like two days later and just love the stuff right from the get go. Um, and the guys have been great. I mean, I think that's one of the things I love about them. Like, it's the same guys I've been dealing with over the years. Scott mm. Sullivan's still doing the college guys. And then even, like, say, Kenton is, is the top PGA guy. When I met him first, he was doing mini tours, and now he's, like, the PGA tour guy. And it's a great company, and their equipment is second to none now, so I absolutely love it. It's been, whatever, people ask me about different clubs and stuff, and to be honest, I haven't hit a, really, like, a non-ping club in a long, long time. Like, I have no idea what the other drivers and stuff are like, because I, I just, I love the ping stuff, and it's been, it's been amazing for me. You don't know what the other ping drivers are like because a lot of the guys that play other manufacturers are using the ping driver anyway <laughs> under a dodgy head cover. Yeah. But the thing is, it's you know with ping, it's like the, the, the round with radars that I do, so many of them now that everyone's of the same opinion. With ping, you know what you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. You lose a club, which you don't lose a club, but if you were to lose a club, it's there in two days. Yeah, and it's the same. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I said, I, I they're, they've been amazing. I said. And then like, they have the new line, the PLD line, as I kind of officially launched, but I've had that PLD there for a couple of years. Everything has been, been fantastic. And all the testing and everything they do is just, it's top notch. And yeah, I said, it's, I, like, I know teeing up every week. I like, I'm always happy with my equipment. That goes a long way, especially the margins are so small nowadays. So. You've only got a wedge. Is it a wedge? I'm, I'd say it's about 150 yards. So I might just fly down a little nine iron, I think. Yeah, okay. Turn over a bit. Oh, good shot. Under yeah. it, didn't get up on the little tee there. No, not quite. But right. Okay, we're okay. putting, we're putting. First hole. Well, not bad, not, not bad, bad. Not for bad. me. So what is this PLD putter? Yeah, this one's kind of cool. I actually helped design it probably three, four years ago. 
Did it's, you? Yeah. So you've had an input into designing cars? Yeah, was within this one, yeah, which was very nice because I was using like this car. I like this mid mallet size and it didn't have too much at the time. So yeah, it was like Tony and I were just kind of messing around. He would send me like the, all the computer kind of diagrams of it. And it was like, maybe this, maybe that. And this is what came up and I love the head. I've used it now for a while. It's very, very nice. I, it's a little heavier for me, which I like. And I like this, like an answer for hot Yeah, one. mallet it's, putter. Yeah, it's nice. I, I like it a lot now. It's a beautiful looking thing. Yeah. And the so, old fashioned grip. Yeah. I, I said, the old fashioned grip. A lot of people, even the great tiger, used this grip. Yeah, the old, the old, the old ping man grip. I like it. It fits nicely right, right, through, right through your hands. Yep. Sevy. Sevy. Well, he made the ping answer yeah. famous. So his one is pretty straight. Oh, lovely stuff. I'm going to give you that. Thank you. Lovely. Nice spot. Nice spot. All right. All right. You ever leave the flag in, Seamus? I, I don't. I can't at all. No. This, like, it's, the, I, I, it's the short ones that just really make me uneasy to try tap. I and feel like I'm going to... And the Fitzpatrick. Boof. From no distance. I know. It's strange. I know. It's still, it's still odd to see, but it worked for him a couple Yeah, weeks horses ago. for courses. Yeah. Eh? Seamus, uh, you went off to college in America to study accountancy. I did. But that was surely someone in your family going, there's me guessing, you've got to have something to fall back on. It was something I wanted to do myself, to be honest, because I knew, you know, I wasn't, at 18, 19, I wasn't like, in a position I was going to turn pro early. Right? So I, I was more than likely going to be there for four years. If I'm going to be there for four years, I figured I might as well get my degree. So accountancy, I've, I've always been very good with numbers. Accountancy just made sense to me. And I liked it because a lot of accounting stuff, if you get it, you kind of get it. You don't have to go reading hundreds of pages about it. And that's what I liked because I could kind of have more time, more time to focus on golf. But yeah, East Tennessee State was brilliant. I said I was lucky. There was other, like Reese Davies. Remember, like, like yes, yes, play, like yes, a good tour. player. Yeah. Won a couple of times. Yeah, I did. So I was, I had one year with Reese there. And then a couple, like my first year we had, and I, myself from Ireland, Keen McNamara from Ireland, Reese from Wales, Garrett Shaw from Belfast, and Jordan Finley from Scotland. So mm -hmm. that was our starting team. So it was, it made it much, much easier and easier decision to go over there at that age because obviously you're kind of going into the unknown, not really sure. But yeah, college golf really suited me. I loved it. And uh, yeah, I said, lucky to have kind of good players around to help me kind of get better as well. Tennessee, a nice place to... Very nice. It was gorgeous. I mean, it was like cold in the winter and stuff, but overall, like we had fantastic facilities. We had one of the top schedules in the country. So it was, I mean, that's all you want. It's up, up, it's up to you after that, you know. And so that, it was fantastic. Like the coach, our coach, Fred Warren was... Yeah, he was amazing. Like he, he'd recruited obviously like the previous Irish. He'd, he had like Irish guys since the since the mid '90s, um, and it was just kind of keep up that lineage. And he, he was great, and he was so helpful. He was helpful with everyone was trying to get better, and we had a good team. And it was like we said, it was a great experience for me. Well, when you're a kid and you're playing this hole, just a beastly looking thing. I mean, yeah, it's amazing. how it's changed over the years. Like you're almost down to shoot now. Like before, it was it, you could Quite see much more of it. But it's it's a good it's, it's a beautiful good old, now, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. What are you? Oh. I've got six iron. You got six? I think it's about one eighty-five-ish hole, maybe. We'll see. Hopefully, it doesn't splash down here. All right. Go. <gasps> Don't know. Just up so here. those trees you were describing. This is the baby. This is the baby. Here it is. The little buffalo wing. Round the outside, round the outside. <laughs> oh yeah, very nice. Oh no! Just, just over the back. I knew for a while you were in awe. That was nice. Eh? <laughs> I think it is a small. We're sharing a tea. We're both skint. <laughs> well, I've got my little 60 degree glide four wedges out like the old shape of the I2 yeah. back in the day, remember? Yeah. Watch, tell us all about your wedges. Yeah, I have, I mean, I have the glide fours as well, but the kind of, I guess, the standard setup. I put the most focus on this. This is the guy I chip with the most. He's my 58, 59 degree. 
and it goes the distance I want, but more importantly, like I love it around the green. This bounce the setup and stuff is just perfect for yeah. me. It's just enough, I suppose, of bounce without getting too sharp with the leading edge. It gives me all the options I kind of want, and it's enough bounce then to be able to use it out of the sand. I always think that like it's a tough combo because obviously, you're like when you get into firmer fairways for a firmer fairway, you, you'd like like lower bounce, but then you obviously get in the bunkers and you'd like something else. So this is this is fantastic. Put them in at the start of the year, and they've been amazing. They're slightly lower flight, higher spin. This is kind of pretty much everything you want in a wedge. So it's been yeah, it's been a nice transition to them, really. It sounds the way you're speaking there, like so many pros, the great chippers, you like to stick with one club and just fiddle around with it, turn it in, yeah. open it up, stance, forward. Is that the way you are? It is. Creative. A, it is. like Because people, like I've always been a good chipper and people ask me, like, well, how do I practice and stuff? And to me, it's just, I don't even practice it a lot. I just practice a lot of different ways. And you said, I figure out how to use the wedge and what way it's meant to design to work and stuff. Because you said with one club, even with this chip shot yeah. here, with the same club, you could play it probably four or five ways, no problem. And it's it's kind of learning out what your club is going to do in certain situations, off certain lies, and then into different types of greens, I think is the key to, yeah. to, to a good short game. Because like, pretty much everyone can they hit their standard, or most people at least can hit a standard chip shot, but it's adjusting it to into the grain, down grain, yep. elevated green, lower green, all that kind of stuff. And it's, uh, yeah, but it's it's been a really nice transition to these guys. But this guy's pretty straightforward, especially with the old rain on the green. That's lovely. That's beautiful. Very nice. Got to hit this firm. A little loft on it. Very nice. Okay. Beautiful. I was the long, I was the long one man, mate. Oh, were you? Yeah. The, the new rules of that are interesting. Aren't they? The new rules of not being able to anchor it. Yeah. Oh, I should still just anchor it. Your journey to Dizzy Heights, where you are now, has been a journeyman uh, trip, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. You know, I've, I've come, come, come the long way there through all the, all the tiers of kind of professional golf, but yeah, you know, it's been... It's all been, the tiers or all the tiers? A bit of both, to be honest, <laughs> it can be. But it's been, yeah, it's been, you know, it hasn't been a direct route, that's for sure, but it's been a lot of learning along the way, and a little, obviously a little slower than you'd like it to be, but, you know, I'm very happy to be where I am now. But yeah, when I, I turned pro, you know, I didn't have, you know, a lot of opportunities, so yeah, I, I took a shot on the, the e-golf tour. It's not even around anymore, but it was, to be honest, in hindsight, it was a very good place to learn golf. I mean, a lot of the guys I played with on tour like played on that tour with me and stuff and you were actually able to pay your own way and make at least break even which is kind of all you're looking for is that putting money tours. in yeah it's been, to be honest it's been pretty much it's a professional tour with pretty much a big cash game you'd pay 11 1200 entry fee you make the cut you get your money back and obviously if you finish up but i mean i was the first place my first year i mean they were up 30 35000 dollars so it was it was pretty good in terms of what what was available like for someone who didn't have any status but yeah it was tough you know i played i ended up playing it for 4 years in my first year, or in 2011, going to qualifying school, you know, I watched Ben Curtis make a 45-footer on the last green to knock me out at second stage, and I had a couple of kind of unusual experiences at Q School, and eventually got through in 14, got to the, the Web.com tour, played on there for two years, kind of became the first Irish person to win on the Web.com tour, which is kind of that like, was a cool tour. That yeah, is a cool tour. Yeah, it is. I mean, it was again, it was like very high standard. Like all those guys come out and they're ready to go on on a big tour and. So it was great to get off that in 2016, and then I've been kind of, this is my sixth year in the PGA Tour and first year in a member of the DP World Tour. Yeah, but you uh, won on the PGA Tour. I did, which was, yeah, I mean, it was it just- Big playoff. Yeah, it was, yeah. I watched holes. it. Yeah, it was interesting. It was, I remember, it was a couple of weeks before, it was like an eight hole playoff, and I, was, I got so bored watching it. And then like, two weeks later, I'm in a six hole playoff, and I felt like it went by in about five minutes. So mm -hmm. it was, it was an incredible experience, yeah. It was, it changes everything in terms of scheduling and all that stuff, you know, it kind of it's kind of propelled me kind of up the rankings and all that sort of stuff and playing in bigger tournaments where you want to be playing. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a big changer for me last year. Mate, your tee shot, but what about that e-tour putting in 1,200 bucks? No wonder the man lives in Vegas. <laughs> I mean, that's ka-ching, yeah, ka-ching. I mean, 1,200 bucks a go, I mean, that's... Uh... It was, that's serious golf. Yeah. That's you know you're playing against some good players. Yeah. It's all right if you're playing against a nine handicap and he wants to play you for twelve hundred. You're like, mate, I'm going to have you. It's but it, you know good players. A lot of good players, and it was tough going, yeah, because you know if you go through a couple of events, miss a couple of cuts, 
you're down, you could be down, you know, at expenses, everything could be down four or five thousand. There's a lot of money when you're trying to play mini tours. Sharing and rooms and sharing, all that? Oh yeah, everything, everything you Red could. Red roof ins. Yeah, and anything you could to keep the cost down. <laughs> And then you always had the big uh, Q, the cost of Q school coming up at the end of the year. So oh, it was man. always kind of a balancing act. All right. Good swing, Seamus. Really loving the move, mate. It's so, so you think you're getting your tea, you're not getting your tea. Um, so simple. Who taught you? Over the years, I've, I've actually had a lot of different, it, it's been an unusual journey for me in terms of swing as well. You know, as growing up, I got into some of the panels, like so I had a Munster coach and the Irish coach and that, and then obviously had like um, Fred Warren, my college coach. And then I struggled, I, I struggled to find someone I liked and went through a lot of the top instructors over and I, I actually haven't used an instructor for the last almost couple of years now. Just doing it yourself? Yeah, I just, I, I got to a point where I was, you know, two years ago, would have been 33 and I was like, at this point, I feel like I should be swinging whatever swing that, that I was born with. Pretty much has got to be there by now. As I felt like I was in a constant state of change and I was never actually ready to play. It was always, I felt like I was always building for something three, four weeks away, but never actually getting there. So yeah, I haven't done a lot of technical stuff in the last few years. Just kind of figured out what I like to do in the course, what shots I like to hit and just kind of do my own thing. It's, 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 it's worked really well for me. It just simplifies it for me to a point where it doesn't change a lot anymore, which is you know, then I feel like I can always compete even if I'm not at my best because at least I know what the ball is doing instead of working on something that I'm trying to get the ball to do something I hope it'll do. What, video back in the hotel room yourself? Yeah, I would. I'll do, I'll do like, I'll get my, my, like, Simon, my caddy, will take a video and, like, he knows a bit. Obviously, he's been caddy for me for almost three years, so he knows my swing pretty well now. And it just, I narrowed it down to just a few things that I, I just realized as some of my tendencies that I do, and I'm usually just working on those and everything else stays pretty consistent. So it's, it's made it a lot simpler for me because I was, I felt like I was always chasing my tail with it. And that's, that was one of the reasons I think it's, it's led to like the improvement over the last couple of years is just, I really haven't done much technically. It's, I figured out what I like to do with the ball and then it's try simplified to a point of, okay, I, like for me, for the most part, it's going to be falling a little right. Yeah, well, that was just mint. Yeah. That was so, just. So I just figured out what makes me, what I do to make my ball do that. And I just stick with that. And I don't really worry about what everyone else is doing kind of thing. I just set up and pray <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> well, that's necky, but it's straight. Yeah, it's straight, it'll work. Yeah, it'll work. Just carry the hazard there. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah. Center cut? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Winning on the PGA Tour, winning anywhere, you know, you're ping, the tradition, the vault, the gold putters. Tell us about yours. Yeah, I have two now. It's, I mean, to be honest, it, it's amazing. I remember going there in college, first time walking into the vault, and I thought it was one of the more special places I've ever seen in golf. It was just so cool and seeing all the, so you see all the names in there and everything over the years, it was, it was, it was special. So to have a couple of my own putters in there now, it's amazing. Got one for that web, web win in 2016 and then got one obviously for the Barbasol last summer. So yeah, they're incredible. You know, I've messed around with going to put them up in, you know, have them in my house and like I was going to frame them, do stuff like that. But every time I have friends come over, it's one of the first things they yeah. want to see and they want to touch them and want to have a look at them. So they're amazing to have. I think it's such a cool tradition and it's uh, hopefully I can get some more in that vault over the years. But it's, yeah, it's great to already have a couple in there. And I did that. Them. I did a lot. I've got a few of them. And I, I, I did that back home in Australia and I, I built a little cabinet. And you're right. Everyone's You've always got to get the key. Yeah, you do. You got but to your do. thing is, having a few jars or something like that, a few wines, and you go to the men's room or something like that, you feel as though you're going to come back and one's going to be one's missing. Going to be gone. <laughs> one's going to be gone. Yeah. But yeah, such a, um, a fantastic thing. Every yeah, time yeah. I look on Insta, there's someone in someone's there, in there yeah. Yeah, looking yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Short tee shot, but I can make amends. Almost. A bit leaky. Wind's getting away. We've got wind. All right. Yeah. All right, Seamus, how far you got? I think it's about 190. With wind kind of slightly in a lot off the left. Yeah. So I've got a six iron in my hand. Okay, tell us all about your iron setup. Blueprint irons. Blueprint irons. Yeah, I, I, whenever they came out, I think they're out a couple of years now, I put them in almost immediately. I just, I love the look of them. 
like there's such there's limited offset in them and they just fit very nicely behind the ball blade yeah it is and that's like it, it's funny like when i was younger i had blades all the way through two iron and now it's you know to stop at five with the blueprint and then i had go to the the eye blade with the four iron just give myself a little bit a little help to get a, a little more climb in it but yeah iron said i haven't changed much for a while blueprints are fantastic they're all a little tweaked with the loft to hit certain distances but yeah they're I think for me visually they look fantastic. They just fit in so nicely with the with the kind of small small they're, hosel. They're a bit wider than those one Louis uses. Yeah. Those, have you seen those? Things? Yeah. Played with him at Dune he Big. Does, and that he doesn't miss the centre. Does no, it? he doesn't. Okay, let's see it, yeah. mate. Let's right. see it, big fella. We started towards the left side of the green, I think. Yeah, the wind is out of the left. My ball proved that. Okay, Seamus, what's the plan here? Long shot, pretty flat, yep. all the way back there. Back right flag. Yeah, for me, so it's going to be just something, a little lob wedge towards the back of the back. So of the here stand. we go again, the same club. Yeah, I, I do. I would, I'll just, I'll move it back here a little bit. And it's going to be, instead of, instead of like the other shot where you're going to be holding off, it's just going to be almost releasing the toe over ever so slightly. Keep it down a little and it'll release towards that back pin. Okay, well, I've got the wedge out, but the thing is, ping, always thinking. Even though back in the day, a long time ago, Little we, chipper. We've got, we've got the chipper. They're coming out. Look. Ping are making a nice little chipper for you good folk. So I'm going to give Seamus a little nearest to the pin. I'm going to use the chipper. <laughs> you go first, Seamus. Oh, I'll do the try first. Seamus, you chip it up there. Don't chip it too close, <laughs> please. No, go on, knock it in there stiff. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. A little, a little short. So what you do with these chippers, sure, you can do like this, uh, normal, normal grip, the Varden grip. But most players, I imagine, will use their putting grip. How would you do it? I think I'd be on the putter, putting grip side. Yeah. I, it's, I think it's going to be a very helpful thing. I mean, you see players at all levels. People use the hybrids off the green and the three woods off the green and putters from off the green. I think this is going to be a nice little help. I think you're right. It's a, you don't have to worry about, you know, what do you trying to strike a lob. Are you thinking seven iron loft? Or seven and a half, eight? Yeah, I'd say maybe maybe eight. Yeah. But I think with the, with the flat sole like that, it should be very yeah, helpful. Yeah, plenty of grip. bounce on it. Yeah. All right, let's check it out. I'm going to use the putting grip. Just like a putt. No! <laughs> Give me the helping hand forward. <laughs> it was closer than yours. <laughs> the old chipper. Coming to a store near you. Uh, didn't hit it. Okay, you go. Now, what's your routine, Seamus? So mine, I, I said, I, I, I always have a, the way I put the ball down, but it's not like I don't use it as a line or anything. I just kind of out of habit put it down just kind of like that yeah but for me a lot of a lot of my routine is done before i ever get up to the ball so the the i like i'm a very visual player so for me like as long as i stand back here as one of the like keys when i'm always when i'm, when I'm playing well i like i just visualize my ball just starting outside left and breaking into the hole and from there it's, it's not a ton of technical stuff i walk in always on the line of where i want to start it so like this would be a straight line so i'll walk in slightly from this angle but besides that, I'll, I'll, I'll continuously be just looking at that spot where I want to start it. I'll set my face, again, just outside that left, continue looking at it one practice stroke. And then I'm happy enough with everything, I'll just come in, I'll reset it just outside the left. Lovely. Saw grip. Yeah, I changed it actually to start of last year. I've always been a good putter, but the, the, in the 2020 year, I just, I didn't, I started missing some shorter putts for no real reason and just wasn't particularly comfortable. And I spoke to my sports psychologist. I was kind of very reluctant to change grip. I felt like I was almost giving up, like if that was in, in a sense. But it, it was just, it was kind of reset. It's almost like changing the putter sometimes where it's just, it was kind of a mental reset. And as soon as I switched to it, it's, it's been very solid. Like my short putting immediately improved and just general kind of confidence levels went up, went up a little bit. And, 
any of us hit putts. Like that's all three, four footers are really. It's like it's, it's if you think you're going to make them, your chances are you're going to make them. It's not the most technical kind of stuff, but it's since a, you've changed, are your stats good? Yeah, they are. Yeah, short putting has been excellent. I think I'm somewhere in the thirties. I think on tour, not as high, quite as high as I'd like on on tour this year, but it's been it's been a lot better, and it's something I feel kind of very good with. Like I feel like I'm hitting a lot of good putts at least, which. You know, from there, it's only a matter of time before some of them start dropping. I like the over, overthinking, not putting the line down. I'm not sure about it, but there was one player that did all right with it who was really the pioneer, the daddy tiger. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's a, I think that's the thing, as I'm learning as I get older with golf, is you, you figure out what's going to work for you. You saw him do it for years, and like, it obviously worked. I mean, you have so many, vid so many videos of him down yeah. the line. But for me, it's just, it always messed with my eyes because when I got over, it never looked like what it was when I was back there. So then I'd be, you know, you're just fiddling. This, yes, you're always thinking fiddling. you're slow. Yeah, exactly. All that kind of stuff. Doesn't do. matter how yeah, you look. It doesn't matter as long as it's going. Doesn't matter how you in. look with a putter. <laughs> doesn't matter how. No. Nope. It's how many. It is. So other sports you're into, Seamus, as a youngster, hurling. Yeah. In Australia, hurling, we sort of say <laughs> it's something different after a night out of dodgy kebab. <laughs> but um, you tell us all about that. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I was lucky. I played a lot of different sports, but yeah, I played hurling. I, play, I kind of played a lot of sports up to like 14, 15, where I got just golf started kind of becoming the main one. But played a lot of hurling, played a lot of Irish football, played soccer, never played rugby, um, but then played a lot of racquetball, a lot of handball. So I played a lot of different sports and enjoyed them all. You know, it was just I have two older brothers, so you're kind of doing whatever they were doing. And like, they, I mean, they, they were, they're literally still playing, still play, they're playing hurling and football to this day. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's, huge, it's unbelievable tradition here. It, you know, being from Waterford, that's like this, this county's Waterford, and it's a massive hurling tradition here. So my dad was big into hurling, so it was something we just started playing when we were, mm. as soon as we could walk, we had a hurling in our hand kind of thing. So it was, I, I, to this day, I think it helps with golf. I mean, your hand-eye coordination has to be very good. It's one of the reasons I, I, I can hit it, not quite the same distance, but almost the same distance left-handed, because really? yeah, hurling, like you've you got to yeah. be both on good sides and all that sort of stuff. you got to be good on both sides. So um, yeah, it was, to this day, it's, I, I always say it's a weird thing to say, but. I, it's still probably my favorite sport to play was hurling. Really? Yeah, it's, it's an incredible sport. It's, it's, it's fast, it's fun to watch, it's so skillful, it's tough. You've got the a right mix of everything and it, it's just so uniquely Irish too. It's just, it's, uh, it's an amazing tradition. If anyone ever gets a chance to go to like a inter-county like hurling match, it's, it's an experience you'll never So you there. must have changed hurling, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, three Irish youths. One here. I did one, yeah, one clear club, yeah. which is a lot of pressure. When I look back now, even when I see the pictures, there was, I don't know how many people, but it seemed like there was thousands. There probably wasn't, it was probably only three, four hundred, but it, yeah. was, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I won it three times. This was my second one. I, it was unbelievable. I was in the last group on whatever day of the week they play, and it was just, it was, it was a lot of fun, fun. It was me and Scott Barham and a Scottish guy were kind of going down the stretch, and it was very close. This is like right through here. I think I tied it up on 15. I was one back playing. No, I went. I took a lead on 15, I think, for the first time. So I tied up on 40 and took the lead. Them. So it was. I, it was just. There were. There was a special day. I, I, all my fa family and friends were out and were watching. So it was a very special day. And yeah, it was. It was. It was a huge win for me and something I'll definitely remember. So did that contribute to going away from hurling to golf? You've won three of the Irish youth. You, you, you're, you're a superstar in the in the junior <laughs> game. That must have helped, surely. Yeah, it did. Yeah. So I. It was just. It was something about the game of golf. who just. I started getting into it and I played so many other sports, a lot of more team sports, but there was something about the challenge of golf that I just kind of caught on to right, right yeah. from the start. You just love coming out that every time you play it's different, you know, and it's, it's something rewarding about it too, like it's, it seemed to be one of those sports that if you could figure it out and put in like the work in the right places, you could see massive improvements. It was just, it was just something I, I loved right from the get go and yeah, so when, you know, it just started to, when I start, I always say that like when I started playing golf, I, I, I used the other grip because I didn't want to. So you grip yeah. the hurley with the, the like yeah. the cross-handed grip. So I wouldn't change after a while because I was afraid it would mess up my hurling. And then it came a couple of years later where I was afraid, you know, you know, I was I wouldn't play a hurling match a day before a golf tournament because I was afraid it would affect the golf. So that's kind of when I knew it was probably time to hang it up and kind of focus on the golf. So, but it was yeah, a lot, lot, lot of good times growing up. Playing. I can tell you, I mean, hurling you've got to pass the ball, yeah. Yeah. Well, golf. It's your ball. It's your ball. Yeah. yeah you don't is. have to give it to anyone. No, you don't. <laughs> it's yours, mate. Go yeah. on. Let's, All right, we'll give you hit your it. ball. Back right flag on a wonderful par three. What'd you say it's playing? It's about 180 to the pin, I think. Okay. Downwind, obviously, but let's see if we can get You got yourself an eight. I've got, I got myself it. a six. That's yeah, about the sum of every, everything up, folks. I 
thought the wind was out of the left too. Get up there. Oh, oh into the screwing bank. back down the hill. Yeah. Unlucky. The green keeper knew you were coming, <laughs> Seamus. He's, talk, talk some he's had some it. fun with these flags <laughs> this morning, hasn't he? Fly a bit. Go! Oh, that's alright. Is it corner? That was bad. Bit toey, that's alright, 25 feet. Up you go, up you go, go on, home you go. Oh, very good. Get back all square, Seamus. Yep. Okay. Little pillar right to left. Homie. You got right to left in this? Fraction, yeah. You've got right to left in that. <laughs> I've got left to right in that. Do you actually? <laughs> I've got left, go on, get in there and tell me. It's, it's definitely right to left. You Not got much, it, but okay. It's a fraction. I hope now, anyway. <laughs> I'll probably hit this spot a lot. It went that way, <laughs> but I just didn't hit it. It's a good try. Didn't hit it. Now, thank listen, Seamus, I was there, Players' Championship, third hole, sawgrass, boom. Yeah. What was that like? One of the biggest tournaments, some say the fifth major in the world. It was. It was, it was an unbelievable moment. I mean, I've had hole in ones, but not in a, not in a kind of stage like that. So it was it was it was amazing, and it was right there along those huge crowds in the back of the driving range and stuff. And it was it's always such a shock when it disappears. Like I knew I hit a nice shot. You see it land on the green, and then all of a sudden it disappears. But it was yeah, it was it was special. It was it was the day before St. Patrick's Day too, which was oh, uh, right. yeah. a nice little nice little touch for it, but. Yeah, it was a special place to get one. The, the, the roars, as you said, such a big, big championship. The roars and stuff there are loud, and it's it was very, very enjoyable. Yeah. I'm getting the sense that you are really starting to feel at home on the PGA Tour. Would that be uh, yeah, the right thing to say? Absolutely. I mean, you just get used to playing with. I think that's the the things with the wins. I win. I guess I didn't appreciate at the time. All of a sudden, your draws get much better, and then you just are you're in the bigger tournament. So, like even this season alone, I've played over the last few months. Played with like. You know, Justin Thomas and Scotty Scheffler and Dustin and just about everyone else you can imagine. So it's, you just get used to seeing the guys and then you, you play with them and you realize that, I know sometimes you just think that those good, like the top, top players in the world, they don't, they don't hit any bad shots. And then you, you watch them play and they're like, they hit bad shots like everyone else, but their recovery and their ability to kind of, you know, bounce back is so mm. much different. And you just get used to being around them and used to playing with yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Name dropper, <laughs> DJ. <laughs> JT, Scotty Scheffler, <laughs> and I got you. <laughs> Ooh, not okay, that way. what we do is we, we know that you earlier in the season weren't in the Masters, needed a great match play you did and had it. Tell us about that. Did you know what you had to do? It was so interesting. It was the first time I'd never been in a position like that where like the, the top 50 and there was a, like such a, like a deadline cutoff. It was, it was interesting. I didn't know exactly. I had an idea. Like I, I knew if I won two matches, like you just, you hear it from enough people that you were going to be fine. It was a different experience for me, but I, I was playing well at the time. So it was nice. And I, like I won the first, I, two really good wins. I beat, I beat Sunjay and then beat uh, Patrick Cantlay. Yeah. So that was huge. And knowing that I was that the Masters are locked up, and then even losing on the third day, like getting through the knockout stages, was fantastic. And and then it was only kind of you're only gaining from there. So it was it was my first match play. It was a great experience. You know, I had you don't get to play a lot of match play obviously when you turn pro. Yeah. So it was it was fun to kind of give it a go again, and it was it was a great week. Locking up the Masters was so it, it was huge. I was trying to downplay it as best you can because it's I feel like in interviews coming up to it, that's all you were getting asked about. I was like, oh, you're up to 48 or seven or down to 51 and this and that. So it was nice to kind of officially lock it up and kind of knowing that that's, you could schedule it in and go from there. And it was, it was nice, first Masters, all that stuff. I mean, all the majors being the first time for me this year. So like knocking, or locking up the, 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 both the Opens, whenever that was, like in whatever that cutoff point was, was massive as well. It, it's just nice being able to pencil it in, knowing that you're going, not having to do the 36 hole qualifiers. Um, and you can really focus on getting ready for them instead of getting ready to qualify for them. The other thing is, you're obviously a good match player. We know that, you know that. How much in the back of your mind is Rome next year? Oh, it's huge. I mean, that's something I've, I've dreamed about for a long time to play. And 
you know, since this is a good run of form and stuff, like even even like last summer, obviously I would have needed like a, an unbelievable late run to maybe pick up a wild card or something, but to it's it's massive. I mean, it's it's going to be my goal between now and then. It's I mean, used to so many amazing memories and just watching the passion and stuff for that. It's just such would be such an honor to play in it and. You know, if hopefully I can keep up the good form and you know and get, get some points on the board whenever it gets started and get, kind of get building towards that. Yeah, building. Let's hope yeah. you get to Rome. Yeah. Uh, another ping player in Rome. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we've got uh, a dare manor not far away either, yeah. Seamus. Another Ryder I Cup know. for Ireland. Twenty-seven. Eight? Is it twenty-seven? I now? can't believe that the K Club's two thousand six. That was yeah. my first Ryder Cup. Jesus, it's true, isn't it? Okay. more like I just haven't turned my shoulders a bit necky that's perfect though yep I'm gonna play a little clipper here Seamus for you just a oh, little picker just a little draw with a back left flag from 165 with a six iron got the draw a little too much sit oh just stay up it might have just stayed up. Okay, let's get up here. Think. Let's get up here. Now, listen, I spoke to you about the Masters. Tell me about that. How was the experience there at Augusta? It was, as I've always told people since, it was, it was one of those experiences I didn't think it could live up to the expectations, but it somehow still exceeded it. Yeah, it so exceeded it. Yeah, it was, it was incredible there. I mean, I'd been there before, never played the golf course. Like, I was more nervous hitting my tee shot on the on the Monday than I've been in a tour event for a long, long time. And it was just a Monday practice round. It was just, it's something you've, I've looked forward to for so long and to finally be there. Everything, like I, my family and stuff were able to come over, I had friends come over, all that attitude, it was just special. And everything about it, like the par three tournaments, and then actually like making a cut and playing decently on the weekend, it was, it was, it was special. It was, you know, you've heard so many things about the course and from watching it and stuff, you think you know it and stuff, but to actually play it, it was, it's probably the most enjoyable like professional week like just like tournament individual tournament wise I've had it's just it, nothing kind of comes close to it so it was it was you know something I said I, I, it's, I said this a few times but I'll definitely I'll remember it for like forever you know I haven't and it, having friends family all that stuff there was just was incredible and the golf course is is very enjoyable you get hit every shot like I love short game and that's just short game heaven around those greens you're hitting shots you're cutting shots drawing shots and it's just it's so much fun Sounds like you liked it. Show me a shot here that I'll here. One, remember forever, mate. <laughs> what are you going to hit? A little nine iron. I just mean, a little nine yeah, iron, you're saying? Just fly it down, starting just left of the pin. Okay. Yeah, that wins out of the left. Yeah. Oh, good looking swing, hit it wind and go. Go, yeah, okay. Now let's talk about the other majors then. You obviously obviously fell in love with Augusta. Yeah, it, it's, you know, again, you, you, I, for me, like I'd never been to PGA or US Open. So it was, you know, you hear what they're kind of like, but it, they've, been, they've been incredible. Everything's just on a bigger scale. You yeah. know, the crowds, again, starting on Monday, like you've massive crowds starting on a Monday and then like the media presence is massive and just the interest levels are so much higher. Um, and they've, they've been two very tough tests, so I, I've really enjoyed them. Like all three of them have been much. You're like, you're more tired after the week. There's just more mentally going on. Yeah. There's more course management, there's more thought process. It's just tougher shots. And but they, they've been great. You know, Brooklyn was amazing a couple of weeks ago, and to be, and kind of on the edge of contention in both of them. It's been they've been very enjoyable, and I feel like that type of golf suits me. You know, we we play a lot of tougher conditions going up and on like links courses where like even par is a good score and I feel like in the majors I've seen so far obviously with Augusta playing tougher this year than the PGA and the US Open like, like shooting level one under was a good day yeah. and I think we're kind of accustomed to that growing up so it's the type of golf that I really enjoyed and I'm like, looking forward to hopefully playing some more of it. So yeah but that you've played it a few now do you feel as though and you hope that you aren't in awe and you can do it? Yeah, I think so, because you obviously, you always, you know, you, you feel like you will fit in, you feel like you can compete, but until you actually do it, it is comforting knowing that. Like, I, in my first US Open, knowing that, like, in a tough, tough environment, tough conditions, and like, you're, like, 
and you just and at the end of the week i think only finished maybe six shots out of out of like out of the lead and you're like it's nice to see that knowing that your, your game will hold up in those situations and, and, on, and in, in those environments and so it just makes you want to get back and even like the open championship here coming up in a couple of weeks you know and looking to get back in, the, in that environment on a like a major championship sunday it's just it's 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 just an extra level of everything it's yeah like it, it, intensity crowd level noise level you know, at a major, like some guy's making a 10 footer for power and like the place is erupting, yep. you know, in a normal like a volcano. Tour, yeah, in a normal tour event, like you could hit a three wood to 10 feet and you might not get much. And you do that at a major and all of a sudden it's just, you did, it just like, it just goes around the course. And it's, it was, it was, it's been fun to be a part of, it, especially to be close to contention like that in, in the last two. So I so was looking forward to maybe getting back there. Oh, there'll soon. be plenty more. The intensity, that is the word. Even us commentators, Seamus, we get there. And everyone's intense. Yeah, yeah. Usually, the producers are seriously intense. <laughs> right, I. Lovely. All right, Seamus. That's good and good enough for me. Okay, Seamus, out of the right. All right. This to go two up with four to go. Home course, everyone, and all that. <laughs> Been playing here all his life. Boom, <laughs> boom. Just. I'm loving that saw grip, man. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I'm it, loving it. It, it. it makes you feel very stable. I'm just trying to make you feel good. I don't really like it when you keep holding putts on me. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about um, Phoenix, the Enzo motion capture where you put all the um, stuff on your, on your body to see the way you're moving. You've been to that. Yeah, I, I did it for the first time there pretty recently. It's, it's fascinating to me. Like I. You'd never really see it like broken down like that. I don't know what the speed of the camera is some beyond my kind of my mind, but it's it was fascinating. You know, you see every little motion that you move, every you see the way your shoulders move is telling you degrees of this and that. It, it's it's incredible the detail you can get and yeah, and then it, like they learn so much with how to flex the shafts are flexing and that like throughout and it's it, it's amazing. You know, it's I picked up a couple of things just seeing more so for me and how my body was moving, but I mean it's incredible between that then and then you go next door and it's into the putting lab yeah. and it's more and more detail and that's the way it's, it's so scientific now and but it's you know as a player you get so much confidence like leaving that because it's you know that you have what you like you have the equipment you have right where you want you have the best equipment that you could possibly have and it fits your body and fits how you move and as i said just giving that extra layer of confidence it, it goes a long way like i love my putter but like one of the things i love about it, even if i have a day where i don't putt well I know that it's the best putter. I've seen it. Mm. I've seen the numbers and it rolls perfectly and I can line it up the best. And knowing that you, you don't have any little bit of doubt creeping in that, oh, maybe I might want to change my putter and that kind of thing. So for me, it's fantastic. Just adding that extra layer of like of science into it, giving you that extra bit of confidence as a player. It's on a tee box that, or on a green, that's, you know, that can go such a long You're way. You're psyching me up here. <laughs> Play your best with the best equipment. <laughs> okay, we've got it out of the left-hand side. How far you reckon eyeballing that, I'd my friend? Say 105. 105, all right. Shank. <laughs> a visitor. <laughs> we can't use that. We can't. <laughs> we can't show people that wedge our wedge is shank. Or if we can, you're going to put that in somewhere, right? Do I play another one? That's, <laughs> That's the one I want. Even the noise of it was mint. <laughs> It was just the perfect hosel it rocket, was, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> I've hit the hosel rocket. I'll put the pressure on you. So where are you going to play this? Are you going to use that slope just the left-hand side and spin it towards it with the wind out of the left? A little, yeah. Yeah? Just to let it drift from the middle of the green. Yeah, and spin it towards it, yeah. That's right. Wind's hit it. Get up there. Oh, yeah. Now that's match. That's match. You deserve it. That was just fantastic. That's <laughs> just the way I 
just <laughs> after yeah. following the visitor. Eh? Following the visitor. What? <laughs> Next time I'm out there on the golf course here with you, wherever in the world you're going to go, see that guy over there. I don't know what he's doing with that microphone. He can't hit it. I. The first hole of a tournament helped me once and I, I was such a struggle at the tee shot. He stood up with a two iron and just full on hustled it. And I had like my two iron out and I couldn't hit it after it. So I just went back and got like a hybrid out of the bag. And as I'm hitting, he's just chirping at me the whole time. Oh, I know. I'm like, I'm not risking an iron after seeing that. <laughs> okay, a lot of wind up there causing a lot of shanks. And I, you, you brought it to my attention. Can I tell them the score? I shook hands prematurely. It's only Dormy. With Dormy. Okay. So I still have a chance, not yeah. much of one. A par five here. Oh, it's one that you can unleash on. Yeah, we might try to send it a little bit more. Okay. Oh, have it. Now Ooh. tell me about the Olympics. Uh, 2016. Oh, it was, it was amazing how it happened for me. It was, you know, I wouldn't have been on the radar for it up to really I won the, corn, the web or corn free event at 16, which got me in high enough in the world rankings that I was eligible. And then with the Zika thing, a couple of guys kind of didn't decided not to go. So it was it was it was different for me getting in. But once I was involved, I mean, it was it was it was something else. I mean, I was I'm always been I love sports, so the Olympics always been a cool thing for me. You know, Ireland we never have like a lot of athletes in it, so everyone's always behind whoever's playing. And it was just so special to be one of those like the opening ceremony. Like walking in behind like the Irish flag into like a packed stadium and all it was just it was special hitting the first tee shot seeing all the Irish flags lining the fairways it was nothing like any event I've ever played that's for sure you know it was you were you felt like you know it, it's a very individual sport we play a lot of tournaments where yeah. you're going out and you're trying your best to play well for yourself really but in that one you just felt like you're part of something so much bigger it was so proud to be you know, a golfer back in the Olympics. I, I think that's where it should be. I mean, the Olympics is a celebration of sports at the highest level, and I don't see any reason why, you know, top golfers shouldn't be there and enjoying it and being part of that. I think it's it's only going to be good for the game. You, you know, you're, you're growing your audience to probably billions. and So be, you are an ambassador it. right here for, 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 for professional golfers who aren't for golf being in the Olympics, feeling that we have our own four majors and they are our Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've certainly, I, you know, I, I, I understand the argument because guys, but I think that will change the longer golf is in it. I, I honestly do believe it because I know when tennis came back in the Olympics, like guys were resistant to it. And I mean, now when you, you know, you talk to guys, I know Andy Murray won a goal, like he mentioned it up there with his major. I think it's just like the Olympics is a celebration of sports that once every four years. And it's, the, it's such a world inclusive thing where there's athletes from every corner of the globe and people that would never watch golf or pay attention to it, all of a sudden it's like, you know, seeing this happen. I, I, I think it's, I, th I personally think, I know everyone's got their own thing, I think it's great for golf to be a part of it. I mean, there's so many, so many other sports and I think it's just, I, I was so proud to be for the first one in 100 and whatever it was, it was 116 years, 108 years. Yeah, it pretty was amazing. cool, pretty cool. Wet sand there. Come on, I mean, you've got a beautiful. What do you think? Let's try the chipper. The chipper. Yeah, the chipper, chipper. Come on, mate. Let's see. I think I'll go potting group like you actually with this thing. Oh, yeah, you're going to give it the normal. You're not, but you're not going to give it the uh, Edward scissor hands that you've been using. No, I don't think so. No. no. All right. Oh, goes left. It went, oh no, it burst off. Not <laughs> bad, not bad, not bad. <laughs> there you go. The old chip, eh? It's going to, <laughs> everyone's going to have one of these. Just play a little, uh, there's a little, this, this flag's on a little tier, so I'm going to do the same thing, just the putting group. Back in the stance. Little bye. Bad though. And not bad. You've got to get one. I mean, it does everything it says on the tin. Okay, Seamus, put me out of my misery, mate. He's got the power. 
well played, mate. mate. Mate, really cool. Thank you very much. Really good. <laughs> really good. You're a good man. You're a good man. You're a great addition to the Ping family. Magnificent. He's got a nice golf course here. Good bloke. We like him. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, West Waterford Golf Club. I mean, fantastic place to, to grow up there, Seamus. Uh, thanks for inviting us to play around with Radar. Did you enjoy yourself? I did. It was fantastic. It was great, great to play the old home course and it was an enjoyable company. It was a good day. <laughs> the new chipper. <laughs> no, oh, this is the old chipper. This is the original chippo <laughs> from the seventies, and we'd like to uh, present this oh, to you. And you. we expect to see you using this in the majors, <laughs> chipping up little dells and little slopes. This is brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah, Cheers well, good luck with the, the rest of your career. Thank you very and, much. And um, really impressed with the way you're playing. You're a proud um, Irishman, and they are very, very proud of you. So thank you very much. Ping. Play your best. <laughs>